There are tons of proto human species that once roamed the Earth, and at one time our ancestors existed alongside other completely separate human species. How cool would it be to come face to face with a different kind of human? These are extinct human species scientists should try and bring back. Homo erectus. These were the early archaic humans that evolved into Heidelbergensis, and from them came Neanderthals and Denisovans, or Denisovans. And then, of course, us, modern humans. So, how cool would it be to see what some of the earliest members of the genus Homo were? really like. Homo erectus is one of the most important species in the history of our evolution. They lived from about 1.9 million to 110,000 years ago, making them one of the longest living hominid species. They bridged the gap between the early Homo habilis and modern Homo sapiens. Fossils of Homo erectus have been found across Africa, Asia, and even Europe. This was the species that finally started venturing out into the world. They had a more modern body shape shape compared to their predecessors with a smaller face and more elongated leg to arm ratios. They were a lot more bipedal. And their brains were still smaller than us ingenious modern humans, but were larger than species that came before them. They had more advanced tool making skills, and they may have started developing more complex social structures. Speaking of tools, Homo erectus is known to have made hand axes and cleavers, allowing them to hunt and process food more efficiently. I've also talked about this before on the channel, but Homo erectus also may have made some of the earliest known art ever discovered. So. That's pretty cool. Even older than Homo erectus again is Homo habilis. They roamed Africa about 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago. The name habilis means handyman, a name that they were given, because this was the species that built some of the earliest stone tools ever discovered. Physically, Homo habilis had a mixture of primate and more advanced features. Their brain size was relatively small compared to later species, but it was an increase from the brain size of earlier hominins like Australopithecus. They had a more rounded skull and less pronounced brow ridges compared to their predecessors. They also built tools that were used for cutting, chopping, and again processing food. A big leap in technological development. In terms of their physical build, Homo habilis had long arms and a smaller body size, which a lot of paleoanthropologists think means they spent a lot of time in trees. At the same time though, they also adapted to walking upright. Their limb proportions were intermediate between more ape like ancestors and later more fully bipedal species like Homo erectus. And in terms of how they acted, it's very hard to say. We don't have any direct evidence of that, but the fact that they made tools means they were at least beginning to engage in more complex social structures. Here's one for the Lord of the Rings fans. Ever wanted hobbits to exist? Because they did. They were called Homo floresiensis. Homo floresiensis, often dubbed the hobbits because of their tiny size, they're one of the most fascinating extinct human species ever discovered. These little guys live on Indonesian island of Flores and were around from about 100,000 to 50,000 years ago. They stood only about three and a half feet tall. But they were normal in terms of their proportions. It was like you just took a full sized human and then shrunk them down in Photoshop. They were also pretty advanced. They crafted stone tools, and their small size didn't stop them from hunting and gathering. And they were managing to survive on an island with some pretty fierce predators, too, like Komodo dragons, which, I mean, God, must have been like about their size. One of the big questions scientists are still trying to answer, though, is why these hominins were so small. The island effect was obviously at play play here, where isolated populations evolved to be smaller because of limited resources, perhaps a phenomenon that's often just called island dwarfism. Essentially things just evolve weird on islands sometimes. But yeah, I just, I would love it if these guys existed, an entire species of like little people, you know, little hobbitses. Now let's talk about Homo naledi. This species was discovered just in 2013 in the Rising Star cave system in South Africa. They lived around 250,000 to 300,000 years ago, which places them roughly at the same time as early Homo sapiens. They had a mix of old and new traits, like most of these on the list. Their brain size was about 500 to 600 cubic centimeters, smallish, 
but not tiny. They had a somewhat primitive body shape with long arms and curved fingers, meaning they might have spent a fair bit of time climbing. But their skull and teeth were more modern looking, like those of later human species. What was really interesting about this find though, is where these initial bones were found. Homo naledi's fossils were found in a part of the cave that was very tough to reach. They may have deliberately placed their dead there, meaning they might have displayed some early form of a burial ritual. The Denisovans or Denisovans are another fairly recently discovered species. They were first identified from a few bone fragments and teeth found in the Denisova cave in Siberia, which is of course where they got their name. What's really cool is that Denisovans lived roughly between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago, which overlaps with Neanderthals and early modern humans. Even though we only have a handful of fossils, scientists have been able to extract and analyze their DNA, and that DNA revealed something pretty crazy. This species overlapped with Neanderthals and early modern humans in a very intimate way. They interbred. They actually found the remains of a Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid, which was dubbed Denny, the one and only first generation hybrid hominin that's ever been discovered. And there's still traces of Denisovan DNA in human populations today, especially in Malaysians and Aboriginal Australians. In terms of physical characteristics, Denisovans are a bit of a mystery. We don't have enough complete complete skeletons to get a clear picture of their overall appearance, which is why we got to bring them back and see for ourselves. All right, I'm cheating a bit here with this next one, but I just think it would be so cool to see one of these things in person, provided they were a fair distance away or we were separated by a very sturdy barrier. I'm talking about the largest known ape to ever roam the earth, Gigantopithecus. Not a human species, but a great ape distant cousins of humans, and they were around at the same time as our modern human ancestors, which is really cool, but must have been pretty intimidating. Gigantopithecus was kind of like the real life King Kong of the prehistoric world. They were enormous primates that roamed parts of Asia between 2 million and 300,000 years ago. They stood up to 10 feet tall, went on two legs. The first fossils of Gigantopithecus were discovered in China, initially identified from a set of massive of molar teeth and jaw fragments. Based on these teeth and jaw fragments, scientists estimate that Gigantopithecus could have weighed up to 1,200 pounds or more. Imagine a modern day orangutan, but several times larger. Now, despite their size, Gigantopithecus was likely a vegetarian. Their teeth were adapted for grinding tough plant material, meaning they primarily fed on things like bamboo and fruits. And this diet would have supported their enormous size, but they would have had to consume a lot of food to maintain this size as well. Their massive size might have been a factor in their extinction. They may have just struggled to find enough food to support themselves and eventually just died out. Homo antecessor is a pretty intriguing species that lived around 1.2 million to 800,000 years ago. They were first discovered in 1994 in the Gran Delina Cave in Spain, which is a treasure trove of early human fossils apparently. They're one of the earliest known human species in Europe and provided researchers with crucial clues about how early humans spread across the continent. They're often seen as a bit of an offshoot of the modern human line. They had a relatively large face with a prominent brow ridge, but their teeth and jaws were more similar to later species. This combo of traits makes them another puzzle piece and the, just this overall understanding of how our ancestors evolved. They were likely quite advanced in their tool making. The tools found alongside their fossils suggested they used sophisticated techniques for cutting food, meaning they weren't just surviving, but adapting and innovating in their environment. Now, of course, human evolution is this incredibly gradual, ever-changing thing, not just a series of completely separate pieces forming out of nothing, but with that said, Australia Pithecus was super important in our evolutionary history because they were some of the earliest known hominins that were starting to walk upright. They lived between four to two million years ago in Africa, and there are several species within this genus, like Australia Pithecus afarensis and Australia Pithecus africanus. These were much more ape-like, but were starting to form more modern human features. Their bodies were adapted for walking on two legs, 
but they still had those long arms and just overall more ape-like bodies. The famous Lucy, a specimen of Australopithecus afarensis, is one of the most well-known fossils. She was about three and a half feet tall, which kind of gives you an idea of their smaller size compared to modern humans. Up next, we have Dragon Man. Who wouldn't be intrigued by a species called Dragon Man? Their scientific name is Homo longi. They were identified from a skull found in Harbin, China, and have been dated back to around 146,000 to 300,000 years ago. The nickname Dragon Man comes from the site where this skull was first discovered. Longjiang, meaning Dragon River. The skull of Homo longi is incredibly well preserved, giving us a lot of insight into what this species might have been like. The skull was large, hinting at a larger brain, similar to that of Neanderthals and modern humans. The brow ridge, quite pronounced, but the shape of the skull overall and other facial features are more advanced and closer to modern humans. Some scientists argue that Homo longi might be a direct ancestor of modern humans or a sister group to Neanderthals and Denisovans. And of course, this list would not be complete without the species that came in second place in the race to dominate the world. They almost beat us, but they failed the Neanderthals, or Neanderthals, a species we coexisted with and some say competed with for a very long time. Oh, how badly do I want to know what these things actually looked like and acted like? Were they violent and predatory to us, or were they friendly dummies who we preyed on and eventually killed off completely? There's still a lot of debate on that. What we do know is that they lived in Europe and parts of Western Asia from about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. They were shorter than us on average, but a lot Lot stockier and robust, built for more cold climates. They had a wide, strong body with barrel-shaped chests and short, powerful limbs. They had larger brow ridges than us, and jutting faces. They kind of had that stereotypical caveman look. A lot of people get confused and think that look was just us, but they were a completely different thing. I joked about them being uh, dumb before as well, but they actually weren't. They had sophisticated tools of their own. They also created art based on paintings and ornaments found in caves. Neanderthals were also very skilled hunters, taking down very large game like mammoths and woolly rhinos. They would have been fierce opponents to go up against. If we were able to form technology advanced enough to resurrect extinct human species, Neanderthals would probably be our best bet. We have the highest percentage of their DNA in us today. We interbred with them. Genetic studies reveal that non-African humans carry about 1-2% to of Neanderthal DNA. So with all that said, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.